So we all know about Camp Coral. Um, Camp Coral is one of the biggest things that people are talking about right now in the cartoon community. And recently, there has been finally a sneak peek, a sneak peek of Camp Coral SpongeBob's Under Years. Uh, it aired alongside the weirdest thing, um, an NFL game with with both a Nickelodeon twist, I guess. And it aired, I think, like in the middle after. I don't know. I didn't see it live. I'm only. The only way how I watch the sneak peek is because of uh, Deadline. I, I originally found out about it because of this um, Twitter channel, uh, Twitter account called The Cartoon Crave. Um, then I seeked out the full thing because, you know, Twitter uh, has the time limit of 2 minutes and 20 seconds. That's the, the maximum time that you can make the videos. So I found the whole 6 minute and 20 second um, video, whole, the whole sneak peek on the official Spongebob YouTube account, and I have to say, this is a, I'm genuinely in excited for this thing, I, it, that's so weird to say, because I think almost two years ago, when Camp Coral was first, like, announced, announced to the public, um, I wasn't really too happy about because uh, even then, I didn't really like the idea of Camp Coral. It was, like, separate from the whole Steven Hillenburg thing. Blah, blah, blah. I d d wasn't really uh, too excited about the idea of Camp Coral. But I was still going to watch it. Unlike most people who were just like, I'm not going to watch this because I don't want to support Nickelodeon um, doing this. But I was going to watch it just to make fun of it. Um, for a completely different reason. Not because I thought it had any potential. It's just because I wanted to make fun of it. Um, and now, I'm I'm genuinely, like, excited for Camp Coral this year. Like, like, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, so I'm gonna go through this, this sneak peek in this, in this video. Just to give you, oh, shoot, I still have the, I still have the, uh, the volume on. Let me turn that down. Just so I can give you my... My true thoughts on Camp Coral and how I felt about the the sneak peek, it, but but please keep in mind keep, keep in mind that this these aren't my true thoughts on the series because the series has not come out yet. We only have this sneak peek to judge Camp Coral on. This is just a sneak peek to let people know, hey, this is what Camp Coral is probably gonna be like for the most part. So if you want to check it out. This is the preview, so that you can know what you're in store for. If if you're not interested, then you can just get out. And I th I think that's um, a good thing because we now have something to show to people who are like, Camp Coral's gonna be bad. It's gonna be awful. P it's not gonna do well. Which again, it could still not probably not do well. It could it could not it could really well underperform. It could last only 13 episodes, um, like it was only picked up as. Um, like, I don't know. I'm not gonna say, like, this thing has, will last, like, seven seasons and we'll get, like, a, a full Camp Coral movie. But, I don't know. Because, like, I don't know. Anything can happen, really. Um, I don't know if this will do well. I don't know if it will be very well received. And if the Steven Hillenburg thing will play a huge, um will be a huge factor into that, but anyways, um, I'm just gonna talk about this for a little bit, uh, just skip the intro here, um, so, right off the bat, I have to say, uh, I do not like Sandy's voice, um, I would not like kids Sandy's voice with the braces, like, it just, come on, Spongebob, <laughs> I do not like the braces, <laughs> why? Why make Sandy have braces? And and freckles, I believe. Hold on, let me look at the... I'm pre... Uh, she probably doesn't have... Yeah, she doesn't have freckles, but... Like, the... The, the glasses and everything. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it just makes... Like, what was that one, um... I think her name was, like, Jeanette. Like, the, uh... 
the female version of Simon and Alvin and the Chipmunks. That's what that reminds me of. Exactly like, uh, Jeanette. What, in that... <laughs> in that exact, like, appeal. Uh, like, in that exact appearance. Like, she looks like a, like a squirrel version of Jeanette from Alvin the Chipmunks. Um, also... Uh, at the frame that I'm pausing on, <laughs> Sandy is, uh, is pogging right now. Topical. But anyways, I do not like the braces. <laughs> and I, I have a feeling that it's gonna be annoying for me when I will, when I probably watch the series. I don't know. Um, also another thing, it's, it's kind of neat to have Squidward be, like, the, the guy who sets up all the, all of the camp games. He's the guy in charge, he has the whistle. And that's nice. I'm I'm glad they didn't like try and make Squidward alongside with along with SpongeBob and Patrick because it would just be kind of weird. <laughs> like um, because the fact that like uh like aren't Squidward supposed to be isn't Squidward supposed to be like many many years older than SpongeBob and Patrick? Which again, okay, I'm gonna actually like clarify this before. Like, a bunch of people, like, say, Oh, this is not following continuity. And yet, it's technically, like, I don't know. I don't like to treat this as a prequel. I think it's just a spin-off. Like, I don't think this show really should be canon at all to the, like, main show. Because, like, I don't know. Like, it's just a, a free-for-all show. Like, where you can just do wherever you want because it's uh it's a show that in my opinion well for me i want to just assume that this show takes place in an entirely different universe other than different universe from uh bikini bottom the main universe that we're used to i want to believe this is a different universe and that's why i'm going into this like thinking that oh this is a different universe where spongebob and sandy knew each other like like years before t at the tree dome that spongebob knew who mr krabs was like way before he worked at the crusty crab like i i want to assume that this is a this is a prequel but not really a prequel like, more like, um, uh, like, a prequel, but it takes place in an entirely different universe. I like to think of it that way, instead of just, like, I don't know, just being, like, for no reason angry over the fact that, Oh, Spongebob didn't meet Sandy, uh, before TF the Tree Dome, so this is wrong, this is why Hillenburg would not be okay with this, Nickelodeon is the worst. Yeah, uh, as you can tell, I'm gonna be ranting about that like, a lot in this video, probably, um, but anyways, so, the, I have to admit, though, the jokes, I have to talk about the jokes, the jokes are definitely, like, Spongebob-level jokes, like, I like the fact that I can watch this thing, like, more than once, and can still find things that I didn't, like, catch before, and that's what I like about Spongebob, that's what made Spongebob so special, um, like, for example, like, when I watch an ep- when I watch an episode of a show like Foster's, I don't really get that feeling of, like, I'm, like, me watching an episode, like, over and over again, still catching, like, a bunch of jokes I missed the first time. Uh, with Spongebob, I, like, I still, to this day, like, catch stuff from older episodes that I still have not caught, that I've- I never even picked up on. Uh, even in, like, the, uh, quote-unquote lowest point of the show, like, during, like, seasons four and eight, like, there's still stuff that I didn't catch, because, you know, we were all dumb kids eventually. Well, I'm still a dumb kid, but the, that, that, that's a different discussion. Um, <laughs> so, season, and I, I do have to say that this, the Camp Coral definitely does feel like the newer seasons of Spongebob in terms of its humor and how the jokes work, and that there's a lot of visual gags, there's a lot of, like, jokes about, oh, this character is being dumb, um, <laughs> and jokes about Spongebob being, like, like, super, like, super happy, and that's why I like about, like, newer Spongebob, is just how, 
like sugary it it feels like it, like that's how i would describe it is that it feels very sugary it feels like <laughs> like it's cranked up to a hut it's spongebob but cranked up to a hundred that's what i like about that i know people won't really agree with me on this but wh whatever it, it's my opinion okay um, so, moving onwards, uh, I do like a lot of jokes here, um, <laughs> yeah, Patrick, like, having to go to the bathroom a lot, and, <laughs> I forgot my, I left my stove on, <laughs> and Spongebob has to remind him, like, like, wait, you don't have a stove, uh, this probably doesn't make sense if you're- if you haven't seen the sneak peek, I'll link it in the description for you to watch. Um, it's a cool, fun sneak peek. Uh, and then you get into Mr. Krabs' room because Spongebob has to take a call from his mom. Uh, and I'm just gonna get the animation out of the way. The- I think is- which is what I think is the elephant out of the- the elephant in the room here is the fact that the animation <laughs> here at this beginning part does not really look good. Um, it looks like what people have said is unfinished. I don't really think that it looks like a PS2 cutscene. Like, that's... Because at least... Okay, the PS2 cutscenes, like, they're definitely lower quality because they were at a time where you didn't have that kind of technology that we have today. Um, to make things look more polished. This definitely looks more polished than that PS2 cutscene. I think that's definitely, like, over-exaggerating it. Um, by a long mile. Uh, but, it, like, something about the coloring and stuff, like, does not look good. Like, how, something about how, like, Spongebob is, like, compared to the sky in the background. And I, I guess also kind of throwing me off because... There's not really much going on in the background, it's just jellyfish fields. <laughs> just a bunch of grass and, like, rocks in, in the background. Like, not really much going on, not much, like, art really put in the background. Which, I guess, makes sense. This isn't a, a critique, because I know that in the show, when it comes to jellyfish fields, like, there, there's always those type, those type of backgrounds. Uh, I'm definitely not, I'm definitely trying to avoid being hypocritical here. Um... But yeah, it's something about the animation does not look right, and just how, like, that, like, I, I don't know, like, the shadowing looks alright, like, when it comes to the foreground, I think it's just, like, like, uh, it's just something about the background that kind of bothers me, it just looks, like, green screened in, I guess it's, I guess that's kind of accurate, though, like, it looks like all of the characters are green screened into the, it, into the, into the episode, like, it just looks like everyone's green screen and not actually there. Uh, I don't know. I I'm not really, like, an animation expert or anything, but I do know that something about this looks off. Um, so then we get to Mr. Krabs' office, in which, definitely, like, the lighting here is definitely better. Like, I do have to say that. The lighting here, uh, cause since it's using more darker colors, like, the kind of, like, brownish, blackish type colors... Like, it looks alright, um, and that's also my other fear about this, is the fact that, um, that all of the colors in Camp Coral were going to be, like, super duper bright, um, thank goodness it's not gonna be exactly like that. Like, the animation is just, the coloring is always, is not always just gonna, like, pop right at you, like, there's all, like, sometimes there's gonna be, like, points where they have, like, a dark setting or something like that. Like, it's not gonna always be, like, bright colors, like, light blue, light green, light pink. You know, it's, they're, you're gonna get a break every once in a while. Also, another thing, uh, Baby Pearl here. Uh, I don't really have much to say about this, it's just the fact that, I don't know, she looks cute. She looks cute in here. I'm, I'm glad that this is, like, I, I am happy with how she was animated, uh, Look like a, a cute baby, uh, to Mr. Krabs. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Uh, it, but that leads into what I also want to talk about when it comes to the animation is the fact that, uh, people, I guess some people don't like how the 
characters are animated, which I don't understand because, look, I, I'd honestly say that this type of animation has has been a thing for CG cartoons for quite a bit in the 2010s, uh, and even going into the 2020s, um, because... Like, like it looks like uh, like the type of stuff, type of animation that you would see on Nick Jr., which you may think that would be an insult, but it's really not, um, because, like, the animation on Nick Jr., like, it looks alright, like, I'm fine with it, and honestly, I'd say that some of the stuff looks kind of like, um, like stuff that you would see in the, in Sponge on the, Sponge Out of Water, uh, well, not really, but, like, some stuff in here, like the textures and whatnot, they look similar to Sponge Out of Water, and how those characters were animated. Um, so I just think it's kind of dumb just to say that. You know, the animation looks bad on on the characters because it, it's the type of animation I expected. Like, I don't, like if you take out the beginning clip, the beginning scene. Like, the animation looks kind of alright. Like, this this looks like it has potential. It's just, I don't know, maybe it, maybe it was unfinished. Maybe for some reason Nickelodeon wanted, like, just stop them midway through and wanted to share the sneak peek because it's the NFL. They, have, they need to have something to air alongside it. And they wanted to pick the Camp Coral sneak peek. You know, to really draw in those viewers. Uh, um, so then after that, uh, there's like this really long joke about um, about how SpongeBob is having a long call with his grand with not his grandmother with his mom and whatnot. And I, I guess it's kind of funny just how like she just kind of forgets why she called, and then then all of a sudden she just, she just remembers and, like. Like, have you caught anything yet? <laughs> like, uh, it's kind of funny. Um, <laughs> then randomly Plankton appears. That's right, Plankton appears and <laughs> and says, "This, I need that. <laughs> this is this is my college fund," <laughs> which is definitely a good joke because it's definitely, of course, obviously like a reference to how the classic catchphrase that he has in the show. I went to college. Um, they say it's for a college fund, so we can definitely tell that he's on his way to college. That means that I'm pretty sure that means that that Plankton is supposed to be either a teenager or I don't know. Maybe he's preparing for his college fund early. You never know. But I guess that's kind of a setup as to how Plankton went to college. Also, by the way. Just a, a side note, it's kind of weird how he always says in, in the show he went to college, but he never says that he graduated college. It's kind of weird to me. It's like he's trying to fake being smart by saying that he's going to say that he went to college, but he didn't exactly graduate college. So, yeah. Um, and then, I, then we also get, it's kind of weird though, like the fact that the plot of the episode just kind of just kind of changes a little bit like you always get something different in the in this clip you always get something different like oh the beginning is starts off with spongebob like ready to do this jellyfish net thing and then he then patrick has to go to the bathroom and then that's a problem and then oh then oh his mother calls and then he has to, like, then he has to take the call, and then the call takes a while, and then he has to catch the jellyfish, and then Patrick catches the jellyfish, and then, you know, it's a, there's a lot going on here. Like, like, there's a lot, and that's why I like about Spongebob is the fact that there's always something going on that, that forwards the plot. Like, they always find interesting ways to forward the plot, which is something that I think that all cartoons and TV shows in general should do is just always have these constant things that should forward a plot and make the characters move. Uh, and then the ending is nice. Also, I really want to point out like uh, a, a meme-worthy face 
um, when SpongeBob is like, uh, is squinting his eyes. <laughs> That's a really meme-worthy face. That that should definitely be a meme uh, at some point. Is <laughs> like when when someone says something cringe about about Camp Coral on Twitter, <laughs> you, you send that reaction image. <laughs> Uh, it's a good meme. Um, so, yeah, in general, I'm kind of excited for Camp Coral. It's, it's unbelievable for me to say this when I was, like, absolutely against the idea of Camp Coral, like, over a year ago. Like, I'm genuinely excited to see what Camp Coral is, because it looks like a, like, I like it. The idea is nice of having a... A kind of kitty version of SpongeBob and like taking it to a whole new world and like that that's why I like to treat it as like a different universe. Like this is SpongeBob, but like aged down and in a completely different universe from the main show. Uh, because then it leads there to be more opportunities. And that's why I think people don't really get is the fact that also when it came to continuity in the show the main reason why the main show didn't have continuity was because it gave them more ability to do more show, to do more things with the characters. So that way they didn't have to worry about, oh, Plankton uh, was uh, talked to Pearl and the algae is always greener, yet he's afraid of her for some reason in one course meal. Like, you don't have to worry about that stuff because the show has little to no continuity. And that's the thing that makes Spongebob like, cool is the fact that, like, it's not really a show that depends on these story arcs or anything in order to draw the viewers in. It's just about SpongeBob having wacky adventures with his friends. That's really what the show's about. It's not really meant to have all of these... I mean, they can do, like, references and, like, yo, oh, they have the health inspector, health, ex health inspector in the quarantine crab. Like, they have, um... Like, what else? Like, they, they bring back the Goofy Goober party bow in, uh, the Goofy, the Goofy Newbie, and in Patinocchio. Like, they can bring in those gags. Like, they can bring back stuff that they already had in previous episodes. Um, but, like, but they can also, like, just forget about continuity. <laughs> because it brings their to be more freedom when it comes to doing whatever the writers want to do for the sake of an episode. And that's the kind of freedom that, like, other, like, cartoons should really have. Um, and I guess that's all I really want to say about Camp Coral right now is the fact that it looks promising. It looks really good, and I can't wait for me to see it later this year, and hopefully I do a video about that.